I hate to say it, but this is ridiculous. I can't believe it. This is fishing line, and this is paracord. We're gonna see if they match up to actual D97 Dyneema bowstring material. Two of the most common questions I get asked are, does paracord work as a bowstring? And what if you used braided fishing line? Where there's even a style of fishing line that's called Dyneema. Is it the same Dyneema as the bowstring material? I find it interesting that this Dyneema material is less than $10 on Amazon. An eight pound spool of Dyneema bowstring material is gonna run you around $30. So could this be the same or could it work closely to real bowstring material? Then we have the paracord, the 550 cord. We know this can work as a string material, but how good is it and how how far behind does it lag beyond D97? So we're gonna test today the stretch, the speed, comfortability of shooting, and the durability of all three of these materials. We're gonna use real Dyneema bowstring, D97 bowstring material as the constant or as the baseline, and then see how paracord and fishing line matches up. So first things first, we need to make some bowstrings. <laughs> Bowstrings are made from 12 or 14 or 16 or 20 strands of material. So it's a bunch of little strands. Funny enough, the Dyneema fishing line has the same diameter or very, very close as the D97 bowstring material. Before we make the second bowstring, let's put tension on these strands and see which strand breaks first. The fishing line had a breaking strength of 40 pounds-ish. This of course could be changed with a higher pound test line. The D97 bowstring material had a 75 pound-ish breaking strength. This could be off because my scale maxed out, but it's fairly clear that the D97 is stronger than the fishing line. Okay, now let's make our bowstring out of our fishing line. All bowstrings stretch, and stretch is not a bad thing, but too much stretch can be a bad thing, and too little stretch can be a bad thing. If there's too little stretch, it could break the bow. If there's too much stretch, then when you put the string on the bow, it just becomes flat and unstrung. A bowstring that stretches more is generally a slower bowstring, and a bowstring that stretches less is gonna be a faster bowstring, so the goal is to kind of find a happy medium. But it's also dependent upon what you do. Target archers and tournament archers want a faster arrow for a flatter trajectory and don't really care about the noise of the string. Whereas a hunter might care more about the noise of the string, they don't want the game to hear the bow shooting, so they might go for a slower arrow, a more stretched bow string, but a quieter bow. So it depends on your purpose. Keep that in mind now as we go to test the stretch on the bow string, the paracord, and the fishing line. To make it even, I've pre-stretched all of these strings at 100 pounds for 20 minutes. All bow strings are gonna stretch some, even if it's pre-stretched. All three strings are the exact same length. We will apply force until we hit 100 pounds and see how much each bowstring stretches. First will be our D97 bowstring material. This white tape marks the start of our stretch where we're just resting, there's no pressure on this and it should be the same for each bowstring. 
D97 stretched three quarters of an inch at 100 pounds. Fishing line is up next. The fishing line stretched slightly more, about an inch. And paracord is next. Oh, I maxed out. <laughs> Let's move the line backwards. Take two. There it is. Paracord stretched five and a quarter inches at 100 pounds. If in fact this is Dyneema material, it makes sense why it's stretched very similar to the length of the Dyneema bowstring material. Originally, I thought this was a large spool, but I've made two bowstrings out of this, and I don't know if I have enough material left to make even another one. So the original idea in the beginning of this cost being cheaper is way wrong because one spool of the Dyneema can make about eight bowstrings, whereas this spool could only make three, so three, six. Actually, they're gonna be about the exact same cost. This could be very interesting because so far the fishing lines perform very similar to the D97. So, it is time to take a couple shots with the fishing line string. It feels weird to release a fishing line, definitely. All right, let's just do it. Before we continue there, here's the speed test. Paracord is by far the slowest string at 147 feet per second. Fishing line came in second at a respectable 164 feet per second. And D97 came in on top at 179 feet per second. This was all shot with the same bow and the same arrow. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. That first shot felt smoother and better than I should have. <laughs> now this is one of the major downsides to the paracord. The string is the exact same length as the other strings, but when you put it on, because it stretches that five and a half inches, now you don't really have a bowstring. The brace height is one inch or so. Here I had to cut the loop and retie it so that we could get a correct brace height with the paracord, but now we're good to shoot it. The only spot on a bowstring that comes in contact with anything is where the bowstring touches the string grooves. And as you shoot, it rubs a little bit and it can wear out over a long, long period of time. I'm not sure if this is a good or bad test, but my idea was to grab this wooden handle and rub it on the string in the exact same location and see how long it took for it to start to fray and then do that with each string. The idea is that this would simulate, 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 simulate. The Sim idea is that this would be an example of the string rubbing on the string grooves over thousands of shots. This may be a terrible test, but why not? Let's see what happens. The one massive difference I see in the drill test and actually shooting the bow over and over and over and over again is gonna be the heat. If I keep the drill running constantly, it's gonna heat up that string and that heat doesn't happen when you just normally shoot the bow. So to compensate for that, I'm gonna do 10 second burst on the drill, wait until it's completely cooled down and then do another 10 second burst. We'll count the 10 second bursts and see which string wears out first. This is 10 rounds at 10 seconds. You can see just a slight bit of discoloration, but it hasn't really changed much. 20 rounds in, still not much difference. So I've done 10 seconds, full speed, 30 times with the drill on paracord, and I ain't making much progress. So I'm gonna move on to the other bow strings and see if those will tear down. I mean, it's paracord. It's not supposed to tear like that. All right, this is ridiculous. I've been here for an hour running the drill on these bowstrings with <laughs> no progress of breaking them. So keep your bowstring waxed and you'll be good to go. As far as the comfortability and smoothness of shooting the bow, I hate to say it, but fishing line takes the win here. D97 is closely behind and paracord is much worse. Paracord seemed to vibrate a lot. It just stretches too much, I think. And strangely enough, the fishing line shot very, very similar 
to the B55 bowstring material. But D97 slightly lagged behind it in the comfortability of shooting. So for the stretch of the bowstring, D97 and fishing line come in as a tie for first and paracord is third. On the speed, D97 was the fastest, second is fishing line, third is paracord. And if you're interested, B55 splits the difference between D97 and the fishing line. For the durability, I absolutely failed on that test. Yeah. As far as the comfortability of shooting, fishing line one, D97, second and third is the paracord. The only thing the paracord won in today is going to be the cost. Thank you for watching my slightly biased, unscientific review of these strings. Yes, you could use all of them for bowstring material. It just depends what you're looking for. Stay shatterproof. I'm for you and I'll see you on the next video. Really all you need is a fishing pole with braided fishing line. Then you can take the line off to make a bowstring, turn your fishing pole into a bow, then go hunting with your fishing pole bow. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for staying tuned.